What's going on? It's your friend, your boy, whatever it is that you want to call me, Clifford Bonet for the Cliff Notes Project Presents, and I'm back here in my studio for another episode. Today, I've been blessed, but let me give you a little background before I introduce my guests. I was working. I took a little break. I'm telling my employer at the time, um, check my IG because I was bored. I got, a, I got a chat, and I was like, oh, this is cool, but it was voice. In my mind, I said, who in their right mind just want to send a voice chat instead of texting it? I was like, well, Cliff, you do sometimes. I'm kind of lazy at that, but we'll talk about that another day. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce, you know what, you know how I do. I don't like to introduce people. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. My guy. This is Brennan Boyd. What's going on, y'all? What's going on? What's, What's up, going Cliff? On, Appreciate man? you, man. I'm cool, man. Mm-hmm. Again, thank you so much for just pulling yeah, up. For having me. Thank you for the voicemail, man. Well, I'm gonna tell y'all like <laughs> this: like uh, we're even here because of the power of reaching out, right? Mm-hmm. So you know, just so just to kind of let you guys know, whatever you're trying to do, like I also tell my clients all the time, you just need to fly the kite. You need to send send a message. There's a bunch of people that I'm gonna have on my podcast that I coming up next. That may haven't even thought to have on the podcast, at least right now in the right early the stages. Moment, yeah. Only because I had the ability to reach out. And sometimes you just gotta fly several kites. And I like to send the voice the voice memos and sometimes uh video messages. This is his excuse. Because <laughs> because look, it got your attention. It sure did. Right? Now it if did. I would have just sent a regular text, you would have just looked at it as a regular mm-hmm. text. It would've it, like like you remember that. Here we are a week later, you you still remember that. That's a fact. And that's why I send the voice memos. Plus people get to see your talk t- um, not see, but they get to the, uh uh, feel your energy, um, you know, uh, get that tonality, right. you know, get that cadence, so they can feel if you're sincere or not, if you're serious or not, kind of get a, a sense of where you're coming from. So that's why I always like to send voices more. And plus, if you're on the move, it's quick, you just get it out there like that. Like I said, I'm King Lazy, King Procrastinating, <laughs> so if I ain't got to do voice to, voice to text, I'm t- uh, my wife's been getting on me. I used to, I like to do a little driving and my ideas pop up at the worst times restroom when I'm driving when I'm actually doing the work so I stop and I think it's part of the ADD but we'll talk about that another time right, right? <laughs> so I think voice to text is like it's cool a little message and also too you know what it does and I'm a I'm an older gentleman I'm 46 how old are you young? 41 yeah. oh it's about time I got somebody that's 40 in here y'all here bro okay all right so um, and completely story, but a little backstory as to why I think it's good what you did. I remember going for an interview for a director's position at Neighborhood Health Plan of Rhode Island. Um, we had a three interview process. First interview was the phone interview. I remember doing that. I got to the second interview. Second interview, I remember this lady came out. Her name is Pamela, um, Caucasian lady. She says, Clifford, Clifford Bonet. And look, and I stood up. And she just didn't say anything. Long story short, six months later, we became really cool and friends. And uh, she was like, Cliff, I got to tell you something. I'm like, what's up? She says, don't take this the wrong way. You know it's cool. I already knew. I was just waiting <laughs> to see when was this going to go down. Yeah. She's like, you didn't sound black on the phone. I was like, what's black people sound like? And she's like, no, I didn't mean that. I was like, I'm joking with you. Yeah, I mean, just to break the ice for her. I said, yeah, I mean. I don't even know if I really said yeah, I mean at the time. Because this was like, I think, 90s, maybe early 2000s or whatever, right? She was like, no, 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 it's normally you just sounded just really, and I was like, okay, go ahead. I sounded like y'all. Exactly. That was the play. Did you get the job? I got the job. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Youngest director at Neighborhood Health Plan in Rhode Island. That's what's up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pat on myself on the back. Oh, yeah. But yeah, man, you know, golf clap will be once I I actually edit this, which is another issue, man. But I know about you, like, this much, only because, and I'm going to keep it funky, I know about you more through my homie, our homie, David Hill. Yeah, yeah, that's a great dude. That's my brother. I mean, I think the only thing that can make us closer, you know, closer brothers is we had the same parents. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I know his mom. His mom is a, an amazing woman. Um, you know, I, I never met my dad. I don't think David met his, or if he did, just a small amount of time that he was in his life. Okay. But overall, like him and I met when we were kids, and we've been rocking ever since. Um, and it's a true testament of friendship because I feel like you put like you like it's same thing with life like you you're gonna get out what you put in right you know so if you got real friendships you still gotta pour into the friendship you just can't be entitled like I've known this person right or I do this certain thing but they just gonna like be around and be there and stuff like that it's not always the case right 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 you know like I'm in Boston and, and there's a tons of people that I know here friends family whatever but like 
you fly somewhere, I feel like that's an effort itself. Yes, it is. So then the people that are living here make the effort. They back. should make the effort. To Let's pull reciprocate, up to connect, right? Yeah. Like I don't mind jumping in a car, rental, Toro, borrow a whip, and pull up on you, but it's like not as extra, extra, right? Right. So for those that make the effort, and we talking about real friends, check on you, um, you know, support what you got going on, buy your products, buy your services, you know, don't ask for a discount, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. Um, asking what can we do to help push you along, mm -hmm. give you authentic, real advice, you know, set you up with wonderful people like you, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a real friend. So I definitely always have to give it up to him. And I'm always going to show for him because he shows up for me. Yep. Um, but yeah, he's the reason why we're here. He's the reason why, you know, I had the opportunity to connect with you. Plus, plus my, uh, my voice memo. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and they all worked in, co they all worked cohesively because I didn't know that you knew David yeah but because I flew the kite and then you got it and then that back connection made then it's like okay it all it all kind of brought it together and it's a beautiful thing I think like just to kind of go back on Dave right is the fact that he's always talking about you you know what I'm saying as far as like yo so my homie said da, 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 and I'm like okay and the whole fitness thing you're gonna talk about the fitness thing that's cool we can get into it because I was just like, where'd this come from, right? Long story short, ladies and gentlemen. So Dave and I, we do weddings. I've kind of fallen off on doing the weddings because a homie Lewis, shout out to Lewis, is much, he's a, he's a better videographer than me. Plus my availability is not as much as it used to be. Get a little older, spend more time with the family and trying to he's build- getting, He's getting life. a little younger. He's getting a little younger. I guess so. Yeah. Thank you so much, yeah, sir. Yeah. But long story short, I'm gonna tell you, I was like, Dave, what is going on? And he was like, man, it's a mindset. It's a mindset. You just gotta da 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 da. You gotta work on it. It's like Cliff, instead of watching TV, why aren't you getting on a on a bike and, and you know doing these a quick hour just watching TV on a on a on a um, stationary bike? And I'm like, okay. He's like, you watch what you eat, you do this, you do that. I'm like, where are you getting all this? He's like, yo, my homie. And I'm like, then let we should all just come over to the studio, hang out, and do a podcast. More importantly, I told him he needs to do something. Yeah. I know Dave. Um, I, this is how I met Dave. I met Dave through music. Because back in the day, I used to uh, manage this young kid. He was an artist, too. I know. And I got footage, player. Yo, so I, I hit him up. No, he came to me because I had an artist by the name of Lorenzo, Army Pop artist. He was like, hey, he was at the Hen House, I believe. Okay. And he pulled up on me. He's like, hey, you mind if I just kind of shadow you? I'm like, all right. It's free, right? He's like, yeah. And go on ahead. And I think he had a cassette tape player, whatever that recorder was at the yeah, time. Yeah, he had a cassette tape. You know what I'm saying? And then she's just running and gunning. Fast forward, we exchange information. He's working at Hot 97. Hot seven, yeah, yeah. He used to drop the Hummer. He used to bring the Hummer back to the crib. And now he used to park the Hummer. Play a day. In Mattapan. Yeah. Uh, you know, back on our old street, just in front of the crib. It's and, a big yellow Hummer just in front of the house. And that's what I'm talking about. He just was like the guy to just maximize things. And I say maximize things because when he worked for Pepsi, don't matter anymore because he don't work for Pepsi. He wasn't really working for Pepsi. He was doing other jobs. I was like, you're here more than you are at Pepsi because we were trying to create a studio. Um, I think it was Lay Max Studios, the name I coined because my daughter's name is Lay. It was first, my first child was oh, Lay yeah, Max. Yeah. Boy, so Max, Lay yeah. Max uh, Studio. Um, but then we started doing the wedding thing. But like, again, fast forward, I'm like, yo, when are you gonna stop putting a project just about you? Cause he has so many ideas and he has a voice. He has this personality. He's like a chameleon. He too has that voice that I was speaking of. If he picked up on, a, you pick up on the phone, you'll never know that he's a black man. Yeah, 100%. I mean, like, Dave, Dave the interesting man. Cause he, he's super talented. Um, when he gets into something, he's hella passionate. He'll figure it out. Like right now, the dude's working on his crib. Yeah, like he's not a handy man. No, but 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 he, you know YouTube, YouTube YouTube University. You see his haircut game? YouTube University. YouTube, yo, you know I used to tell this dude where I, I remember I used to be like, yo, why you getting haircuts every week for that YouTube game? So I just go. I'm like, yo, you're a bum, bro. I was like, I can't afford it. He's like, yeah, you can. I can't. Yeah, I'm being honest with yeah. you, fam. He's like, whatever. Years later, I'm like, seeing him posting stuff. Doing the good dad, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, cool fit dad. Cool fit dad. I've been telling him about that. Like we, you know, that that was a project that we was trying to work on. 
Um, not trying, but we were working on. But Davis like, I'm like, man, we need to get this merch out minimum at least. That's what I. I'm like, yo, there's a bunch of cool fit. I shouldn't even be sharing this. But there's a bunch of cool fit dads out there. They would gravitate to that. Um, but he's unique though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the camera hugs him. The camera yeah. likes him. But for whatever reason, I think his time will come. And I really hope that when he he hasn't even you're you you're here before he's been here. I think I think with David, I mean I am gonna hold myself a little bit accountable to this. I think I think David's gonna come through when I when I when I continue to rise. Because I feel like I'm gonna create an opportunity for him to not work as hard. And then he can focus. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 that's how that's how I look at it because you know, like what I admire about him is that he's a family man. We're right. the same age, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But he got a family. Yep. He got two beautiful kids. Yep. You know, they just bought a house. Mm-hmm. He's working on a second house. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he got two two jobs. He does, you know, um, things on the side as well. Mm-hmm. Very consistent dude. And he's a good father. Right. You know, but I know, like, he has uh, a lot of passion, a lot of creativity. And he, he has more to offer the world. He so more much more. The, the world don't know. Forget but, this photography yeah. game stuff y'all are seeing, man. Mm-hmm. Like, that stuff's cool. But that that this is what's even funnier, right? That's just Dave watching YouTube and saying, let me try. Yeah, for sure. Like, he's not he's not giving a full effort. <laughs> that all. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy, that's, bro. That, that's the thing. Like, like what I, I feel like what sets me apart, not just from him, but with other people, I and I I execute. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I may not know everything. Mm-hmm. But I'll just execute. Right. Now someone like him or sometimes other people, they may procrastinate and sit on it. Or they may feel like they need to get all the information before they start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they want to mm-hmm. get super technical, super linear, you know, before they start. And then what tends to happen is they don't start. But David, he just there's just so much things that he wants to do. Mm-hmm. So when he'll start something, he'll just get bored right. of it and then just stop. Just stop. You know, you know what I'm saying? What? But, but like if I still lived in Boston, we would have still had that show. I believe, you know? and that's a beautiful segue yeah. to just leave Dave now, because I think it's a beautiful segue to you. Because when y'all were doing the show, truth be told, I'm like, yo, I told Dave we should do something similar, but he's working with dude. Yeah. But I kept that to myself. Yeah, yeah. I got but I'm much full transparency because yeah. lately I, I just that's I've, I've always been transparent. I don't really allow. I check my ego at the door yeah. or at the keyboard since everyone's on their phones now or computer. But I sincerely was like, damn, I envy that. I was like, they're doing it. But you said something really interesting just now. You said that you're one to just execute. Yeah. For me, I'm a serial executor. I don't execute because those couple things you mentioned after when you said, yo, you, you, I want all the information, I want the look, I yeah. want all this. Someone just told me the other day, shout outs to Eric, uh, my um, makeup artist for this film we're shooting. He said, I think it's fear. I always knew it was fear. Yeah. I'm very fearful of putting something out there and then someone saying, mm, look at how we're looking at the monitor over there, right? Yeah. And you see the Cliff Notes project. Mm-hmm. I'm like, uh, that's a little too high in the tank. Yeah. I should bring it down just a little bit. That will stop everything for me. I dig it. Bro, the amount of interviews that I have just from out in LA on my hard drive. That ain't out. Yo, yo, is this coming out? Great fucking question. And I'm going to say yes, because now you're going to be on me. It got to come out, because if it don't come out, you have to do it again. Because by the time... <laughs> you're going to be a millionaire. You're going to be a bunch of things. <laughs> you know? So... Um, but yeah, Why do like, you think that is, though, man? Well, Honestly, I'm asking you for help right now. All right, well, before we before we charge on that, what I want to say for people that may be having some issues with Here's the kid. Talk to the people, man. Let the is people that, know. like, listen, you can worry about getting it perfect, but once you put it out, it's already old. Right. So people are going to need to see the next thing. And a lot of you guys don't know how to build an audience yet. I'm so no one's even gonna see what you put out. So you're gonna you're, you're worrying about putting out perfection that no one's going to find. Mm. So if you just put out something, let's say by the time you get to the twenty the twentieth episode or the thirtieth episode, maybe you're nice then, or you hit a lick on that thirty first episode, then people are gonna go back and watch your old stuff. You would have got better thirty one times instead of trying to get better the first time. It's like Iverson 
Kobe Jordan, they ain't gonna score 40, 50 points on one shot. It's not possible. So unless you got, unless you're super plugged in, which mm-hmm. a lot of us aren't, mm-hmm. you put out one piece of content that's already old as soon as you put it out. That's how fast things are moving. Yeah. You, we don't even have the audience collectively that are, that are gonna ignite that to make it go viral unless it has cats, booty, car accident, something crazy in it that, that people point. are just gonna wanna share. That's a good but point. if it's something like this, this is gonna take time to build up, you That's know? Point. Um, but then to kind of go into what you're saying about the fearful, I think a lot of us is like, it's the programming. You know, parents, education, what we tune into, um, you know, social programming, the area that we live in. There's a lot of things going on subconsciously that we don't even pay attention to that our brain absorbs. Now, like, look, if you pay, give me, give me an example. If you pay attention to a little kid, mm-hmm. like a little kid, let's say one years old, or even younger than that, and and let's say you're having a conversation with your your girl or your guy, or you're just having a conversation around the baby. If you pay attention to the baby, they, they the baby is absorbing so much information at, at like milliseconds. Mm-hmm. Like you really pay attention to the baby, like the baby's like moving, like you know. So your brain's absorbing and storing a lot of information. So you have all this information that you're learning at a, at a super fast speed that's just being stored in your subconscious. Mm-hmm. Now, after a while, that's learned behavior if you see it over the course of time over and over. Mm-hmm. You are just gonna pick up on those patterns, not not even knowing, unbeknownst to you, if, if a parent, teacher, brother, or, or the social constructs are moving in, in um, coordinates with that behavior okay you're just gonna do it yeah you're not gonna question it you know what i'm saying you're just gonna do it so with a lot of us we have these patterns that we developed over time and we're not breaking these patterns and a lot of these patterns are you know they're fueled from fear because a lot of our parents were fueled from from whatever they came they may have migrated right, right you right. know or maybe they were maybe they were struggling to put food on the table. Mm-hmm. And maybe they felt like I didn't go to college, so my kid gotta go to college. But I don't know why they need to go to college. I just didn't go, so they need to go. Okay. That don't guarantee success. Those are yo. You know what that, I'm saying? So those it's are like, super points, man. So how do you break it? How you break the patterns? You gotta break the pattern by breaking your behavior. So one of the first things I would say is like do an audit. You gotta do an audit. So so when I when I teach my clients, so I'm talking about teaching my clients and all this stuff. So if you got, for y'all that don't know, let them know this. this. This is free. Give them a little tidbit. I'm We're a productivity coach, right? I'm a productivity coach. I don't really, you know, it, I, I guess it's a form of life coaching. I don't really deem myself a life coach because it's kind of broad. Okay. You know? So I focus on productivity, um, helping entrepreneurs become more accountable, mm-hmm. and then I created a business system. So now I'm bringing that in so they can scale and make more money at the same time because it's important to be more productive, more accountable in your life. Just be a better person, right. but we all need money. You can't even like you could be an amazing person, and not have money, and then your life's gonna be a little harder. Mm-hmm. So having the money will make your life easier. You have options, you have freedom, you can help other people. You know, so like one of the things I always tell my clients when we sit down for the first time is you have to self audit. Now, what are you really doing from when you open your eyes and when you close your eyes? Like examine that time. Literally, yeah. 100% literally, like, what do you do your first hour of the day when you open your eyes? Your eyes are open, you're married. What are you doing with that first hour? First thing, I get my water just to wake up. Second, I do what I got to do to clean up, take care of the kids, get them to, you know, get them their breakfast, make sure they're all there. Well, if we were good parents, but like we're trying to be. Y'all are great parents. We're trying. No, nope, don't say try, you are. Uh, thank you. But I have their breakfast, their, their lunch is already semi-prepared. My daughter likes warm foods minimal because she don't eat much we get that all done get them to school head to the office um my 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 wife and i we manage uh my father's practice and while i do that i try to do things like don't try when (laughs) see see it's you learn see see what i'm saying that's an example that's the subconscious behavior you learned that so now you just regurgitate it. Bro, I you don't you don't even know why you say that. You know what's crazy? You I'm just a hypocrite because I tell people to say I say don't do try. If I said don't try, don't t- tell say that you're trying, you're doing. Because look yeah. what you're doing right now. But yet I find myself doing that. I, I am the king of a hip uh, of being a hypocrite, procrastinator. I am the 
I can self audit myself, but I can give I can give myself the illest reasons as to why I didn't do whatever it is. So what that. you just said right there, you're the king of what? Procrastination. And the king of what? Um, was it? What was it? I wish I can replay. King of procrastination. Uh, I can make up excuses. I can right. fly whatever. So right there, you're the king of all these negative things. Yeah. So you already self talk yourself. In, the, in, the, in a state where you're gonna be behind. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So that language is powerful. Language is super powerful and it has these patterns that get interpreted in our subconscious and that, that becomes what our reality is. Okay. So you can't talk about yourself like that. Even if, even if right now you feel like you're not that yet, you still have to talk to yourself as if you are that. And then you'll become that. Mm. So, you're not the king of procrastinating. You're not the king of being lazy. You're not the king of self-doubt or whatever whatever it was. We can obviously play it back to, mm-hmm. to get the real thing. You're the king of making it happen. You're the king of acting ASAP. You're the, you're, you know, you're the king of these amazing ideas and putting things together. Because that's what you want to become. So if you're, if you're trying... This is my opinion, you know, and some of this is scientific fact, but this is my opinion. You guys can have your opinion. I'm not saying anyone should do anything I'm saying. I'm just giving you my my um, life experience. Talk about it. So, if you talk to yourself in a very positive manner every single day, you will begin to break some of these bad habits that we have when it comes to how you view yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because self-value and self-awareness are key in any relationship gotcha. with yourself first. Um, and then you can start breaking the patterns of your behavior with how you're approaching your day. Now, now I just asked you how you start your day. Kind of fast forward, unless that's literally how you did it, because you went from waking up to grabbing water to getting up to washing up to taking the kids and making sure they're getting food. So you still didn't, there was no taking care of you in there other than the water. Well, I take my I take my cholesterol medication. That's what All right, I'm okay. Doing. So what time do you wake up? Um, we try to no try seven seven thirty. Okay, so you said we, so that's you and your wife. Correct. Can you wake up before your wife? For sure. All right. So I'm gonna just give you what I call the million dollar morning. All right. Let's right? start about it. So you should wake up at six. Okay. So wake up an hour earlier than what you do right now, mm-hmm. right? So in your case, it would be six. The first thing, if I was you, that I would do, still have your water by your thing. Maybe drink that water first. Mm. I would read 10 to 20 minutes a day. Really? Start that off. Then I would write down 10 things I'm grateful for. You can at least write three. I write down 10. Three to five is fine. Mm-hmm. What you grateful for? If you if you believe in God or if you're spiritual, pray or talk to the universe. That's going to take a couple minutes, a couple seconds. Mm-hmm. Meditate 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes. Do that. If you got a journal, like you're very creative, I would have a journal or, or use my phone. Write down the first thoughts of the day okay. on there. Um, after that, I would read my affirmations. If you don't have affirmations, create some. It should be broken down with your working affirmations, meaning the things you're constantly working on. I'm and glad then, you said that because I was going to ask you. And then your foundational you. affirmations, okay. which are going to be things that are staple. Okay. You know, like I'm a great person. I treat my I treat myself with respect. I show, I'm a great father. I show up for my kids. I'm a great you know I'm a great uh, husband. I have a perfect marriage. Things like that. Things that are staple. Mm-hmm. But there may be things you're working on. I'm gonna get this person on my show. I'm gonna make this amount of money during the, during you know this this month or whatever case. So you have your affirmation. And then finally, I would have a vision board. If you don't have a vision board, or if you're or if your the aesthetics of your bedroom is it conducive to you having a vision board because it just that's just how you want your your place to look. Make a digital vision board on Pinterest on your phone. Okay. And then you should literally touch each item on the screen. So I have a vision board in my room, so I touch it every single day. Now the importance of a vision board is because you're not gonna know how the universe is gonna work with your subconscious and with your actions. Manifestation is all about seeing what you want, but then doing the action to actually make it become reality. Okay. So the vision board, if you see it every day, right? If you interact with it on a daily basis, these things are going to be working in the background. The subconscious in the universe is going to be uh, connecting, conspiring to help you achieve these things. And when I can tell you like this, several things I put on my vision board 
that I had no idea that I was going or how I was going to accomplish these things, I have the majority of my vision board accomplished. Could you share two of them or at least one? So one of them was uh, figuring out how to make a million dollars. Liquid? Yeah. Well, this well the first one was gross. Okay. Right? And um, one was, actually, it was this million dollar breakdown, which you'll have my information in a caption. So if anyone wants it, I can send it to them. Million, million, million dollar breakdown. So they break it down with how you can do it based on a monthly subscription based program. And then how you can do it based on like if you're selling a product or a service. Okay. And I figured out two ways how to do it from products that I currently have. Mm-hmm. So that's what's going on right now. Okay. Like I'm going to achieve that goal with both of these products. I had no idea I was going to do that before. Another one's is a car that I wanted. I had no idea I was going to get this car. Wow. It was a Tesla Y. I bought the, you know, it's about to be delivered. It might be delivered by the time this podcast is up. Or maybe I would put X amount of miles on it because we know the podcast. So okay, that, yeah, yeah. So that's on there. Okay. And then another one was um, the, the Amex Trifecta, which is basically three M, three Amex cards, which was, you know, uh, platinum, well, in my case, platinum, gold, and then the blue. The blue was on the way. But I didn't have no Amex cards when that was on there. Really? So there's a lot, and there's other things on there. But there's a lot of things on there that I'm telling you, like you put your wildest goals on there, or your short-term goals, or your mid-term goals on there. Mm-hmm. You gotta have the 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 distance. You gotta shorten the distance from like it being so far away from you because it, it doesn't currently exist to like your thoughts. Your right. thoughts is extremely powerful. That's why we talked about like how you speak about yourself. About yourself, yeah. Yeah. And um, that that whole like manifestation thing and visualization thing, it's a real thing, mm. you know. Because what people can't deny, even if people are saying like, "Oh, I don't believe that," you can't deny energy. Right. No, so if you believe in energy, yeah, then real. it works. Hundred percent. If you believe in energy and frequencies, then then that that should tell you enough, right there. How'd you get to this point? Because I read. Twenty twenty, I read eighty six books. Really? From a technique that I call 2020, which is 20, uh, 20 minutes of a real book and 20 minutes of an audio book. Did I do every single day, 365 days, read 2020? I did not. Bro. Probably took a couple days off in between, you know, because we all, whatever. But I'm letting you know, that muscle memory of 2020 and allowed me to read 86 But I read every single day. The four things that people should uh, focus on if they want to improve is MBEB, which is your mind, body, your energy, and your business. If you can do these things every single day, you're going to be a better person. You're going to get further in life. So your mindset is a muscle, right? You mentioned David's home, but the mindset. Correct. So the easiest way for you to flex that muscle is to read. And you may not be a pace turner, but if you like audiobooks or if you like ebooks, I'm glad you said that because that, that, that. that works for me. All no, right? Yeah. Dig into that. Um, in your case, your 2020 might be two audiobooks. Bang, bang. You might have something that you're just busting down in the car. Okay. Something for the gym. Yeah. Something yeah. in the morning. You know what I mean? But that muscle is going to get it. Me specifically, I'm, I'm like enamored over like personal development and marketing. Okay. But that's the majority of the content that I'm absorbing. That you're absorbing. I have a great friend of mine. He's like, bro, you need to read some fiction. And I do jump into some fiction books, but not a lot. Okay. For me, to take my mind off of taking in so much information, I'll watch sci-fi movies, which I really like because it helps to stimulate my creativity. Right. It allows me to be a kid again in a kid-like state because of like the fantasy yeah. and the storytelling. Yeah. Um, and I kind of knew this when I was younger, but I didn't really know. Like, I'm like, why do I, why does Star Trek, like, I don't like this when I was kid. Why, I don't like it. Why can't I not pay attention to, why can I not stop paying attention to it? You know what I'm saying? And then I realized over time it's because that sci-fi allows me to relax, but I dig into the stories. Like, I love Game of Thrones. I love, like, Dungeons and Dragons. I love, like, Harry Potter. You know what I'm saying? Star Wars. I love Star Wars. You know what I'm saying? Like, fantasy genre, yeah. sci-fi genre, that's me. It allows me to escape, but at the same time, it allows me to refuel my creativity um, and then balance out the fact that I'm an, I'm an information junkie. That's you crazy I mean? you say that because in high school, um, we were required to read at least... Um, 
they they gave points to these books that you read, so you have to get ten points Cliff notes. Person, boom, right? But here's the funny thing: yeah. the cliff notes didn't work. The teachers knew about that. They were like, "Yeah, I'm gonna give you questions that you would actually need to read." To have, yeah. So Terry they Brooks, like tri- they're like tricking you. Yeah. So the the so for me. I got into like uh, like the wizardry books. It was like Witchstone of Sonara, the, uh, the Elf Stones of Shannara, all these like sci-fi, like that type of Game of Thrones type of feel. Yeah. And it's funny you say that. Do you think that we also gravitate to because it's kind of a, a get away from reality a little bit? So yeah. it allows as, us as to as adults just, or as, as kids? adults. So as as adults, I think some people. They may have a different take on it because it could be other genres for other people. Mm-hmm. I think, or maybe like people that are like us, yeah. Because if you go to like a con, you know, like a like a comic con or like mm-hmm. a sci-fi con, there's millions of people that go to the right. right, right. So I think yeah, it allows people to escape. It allows people to pretend. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of people that probably feel a little, um, you know, fearful or or anxious if other people knew that they were like geeking out on like. Fantasy, fantasy and, 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 and animation and anime and, and sci-fi and stuff like that but it's a whole it's millions of people that are into that um and for me like it's great because it allows me to be in a kid like a kid like state allows me to pretend um, use my creativity imagine you know and i feel like that's what we need to do more of do you think do it's that do you think it's therapy like do you think doing something like that is like a a form of therapy too to kind of just say hey i'm gonna be this for a little bit like halloween i look at halloween you see the toughest gangsters out there they're dressing up yeah, they're like yeah. ah, okay you yeah. you you do have you, you you're okay you are human mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so do you think doing these type of things like the, the reading or <clears throat> watching these type of movies you're saying i understand reality because we got to live in it 365 yeah but for that in between here and there Going and watching Game of Thrones, it allows me to just forget what I'm dealing with. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, you can you can get invested in these characters, and um, it's all like microcosmisms of of like real life anyway. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, like I got into I got into Game of Thrones heavy, and then when it came to us, when it came to the end, I'm like, damn, like what am I gonna watch now? Okay. Like what's what's happening? So to what what has now? replaced? I know you're waiting, you're excited about, what is yeah. it, the prequel that they're doing? They're, they're coming yeah, out yeah, prequel, yeah. Right? I'm excited about the prequel that they're doing. Um, for me right now, I was, uh, what, what's the genre I'm trying to get into right now, or, or that I'm actually getting into? Um, I've been watching um, Squid Games. That's not really sci-fi. I heard about but that. But it's a story. I gotta get into it. So yeah. I've been watching, I, I just started that. Um... Uh, I'm going back to watch Star Wars again. Okay. You know, the old ones and then the current yeah, ones. Come back, yeah. Yep. Um, right now, I really want to get back into Harry Potter. Okay. Watch it from an adult eye. Just know? to see if there's just things to see you catch. If, okay. Yeah, think things. And just that whole story, because there are some parallels with that in Game of Thrones. Well, um, things like that. But I thought, uh, so you have mentioned like the, um, I like those books, right? Mm-hmm. You know who got you? A lot of people don't know this, but you know who has like a whole like uh, fantasy book series? Who? Kobe. He started. I thought he just started writing them, and unfortunately, because unfortunately, um, uh, uh, his passing, that he didn't get to finish. Nah. So, is that I, the basketball one? I think used? I have. I might have five of them, and I actually bought them because they're actually works of art. Yeah. Like the the binding, the page colors, you know, like the. Um, the textile. Okay. Like, these ain't just regular, just books. Like, so this like, is the actual production. Yeah, these are like, okay. these like, these are collectibles, in, in my opinion. Okay. You know? Um, but the first series had, is called the Wizard Art Series. Okay. It's three books. And, he, and it's using uh, fantasy uh, taught through basketball. You know what I mean? But he also dropped, uh, like, uh, two tennis books, too. Really? Yeah, yeah. So I bought wow. all of them. Wow. Okay. I bought all of them. Um, and like I said, like they're, they're great books. I haven't started reading them yet, uh, but I just wanted to have them. Okay. Um, now I can just get into them when I want. My goodness. Yeah. So Yo, reading so- is very important. So I don't know if I went over everything. So mindset, reading, this is an MBE. If you want to get better every day, simple. Mindset, invest in your mindset, some type of energy. So your energy is going to be meditation, mm-hmm. you know, um, some type of yoga or something. You know what I'm saying? Something to connect you to the universe. Something to just 
keep you present. Okay. You know, prayer, something. Like, just your energy. I, when did you first start doing this, man? Uh... I think I've I think I've always did a form of it. I just didn't know what I was doing. Okay. I didn't really like zero in on it. Um, but I think it got more intention when I moved to LA. Really? Yeah. Now here, here's here's a question. And that's my body and, I want, and I'm I'm gonna leave the camera on you because I want to see the response. Do you think it's because of the people that are in LA that you really started focusing on it? And I don't mean the friendship, but how they behave, how they act, how the mindset is out there. So I think that it's definitely easier for you to get into some of these things if you're in Los Angeles because that is a lot of that supportive culture. Dude. Supportive. That's yeah. the key word I was looking for, ladies and gentlemen. Now, because when it's a little different here, I'm not hating on Boston, but people kind of look at you on with a little side eye. Yeah. If now you can twist that up. That'd be good. Yeah. You can do that. Now, now for me, me specifically, uh, it wasn't the people. So I was already on a journey since I lived here. To like become more, you know, that started before I moved to LA, and I think being in a, being in LA, I've been able to like spread the wings a little bit more. But I was already working on figuring out how I can become better while I was still living here. But I've been here the majority of my life, so and here is Boston, so it's like I don't know everybody. Right. I don't been I don't been everywhere. Mm -hmm. I know I know everybody. I don't been everywhere. There's nowhere else in the city that you can go that you don't know because there's no more land. Right. So if they make a new building or a new restaurant, it's going to be in the same neighborhood on the same, same. block as you've been That's to. That's a fact. That's a fact. So there's nothing new. There's new. nothing to stimulate my senses. Yeah. L.A. is different because everything is just out. Like, you want to go somewhere, you got to just go out. Y'all yeah. ain't really going up. They're going out. And there's a lot of land there. Yeah. Now, for me, it's like, okay... There wasn't a lot of people at the time while I was living here that I was close to that were looking to become better mm. the way I was. Right. And I'm not saying that I wasn't looking to be better, but just the, the journeys in the past were different. The mindset was different. The mindset was different. So for me, it was like, I can't remain here mm -hmm. because I can't learn nothing else. Right. Did you feel alone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely felt alone. I think the last two years, what I did, um, I was working at... So I'm, I'm, I'm still a licensed realtor. So I'm a licensed realtor in California and Massachusetts. So my last like two years, I was working at Compass on Newberry Street office. And what I would do is, cause I would always be there like all day. Um, but I, what I would do is like Thursday nights, Friday nights, I would do like this, like this creative meet, this creative meetup. Okay. So basically what I did was th those entrepreneurs that were, that wanted to come through, I would open the doors. Mm -hmm. They pull up. We were all working on our own individual stuff. Um, That's my brother. Don't mind him. Hey, what's up, man? Hello. Come on in. We were all working on all... Um, you can sit, sit right over there. Yeah. We were Sorry, working on our individual ahead. stuff. Mm -hmm. But we would do it together. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like Cliff's working on Cliff Notes. I'm working on... And they provide whatever One of my programs. And then... Teresa said she's working on her thing. Okay. We will all be in the same room. Okay. Cooking up individually, yeah. but then I could trust you and I can bounce ideas off of you. And then a lot of stuff came out of that. Really? Like one of my friends who's a millionaire who does stock options. Mm -hmm. It was like three ideas that came out of that, that they're out here in life now. Really? You know, like he wanted to have a cohort in uh, Puerto Rico where he teaches. It's kind of like an Airbnb for, for uh, it's, awesome. kind of, it's kind of like an Airbnb uh, for traders, okay. like they can come trade for a week, live yep. there, yep. be under him, get some tutelage, move on. So he good. wanted to build that. Yeah, he only wanted to move to Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. and he wanted to do this trading tour, okay. which we started to do. We did like six cities, um, which we would just go to different cities and then talk about the mindset behind trading. Then and then COVID hit, but those are all ideas that came from that. Okay, for me it was like moving to California, um, starting a merch brand, get my real estate license out there. All that stuff happened. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, I did that every week for like two years because that was my like, that was that was my ability to like, okay, I could work on my thing or yeah. other people that are also working on anything. So it was like, it was a lot of collective energy that was in there. That's amazing because that's how I felt when I went out to Cali. Um, shout out to my boy Kevin. Stayed at his spot with his family, beautiful yeah. home. 
And then he was able to kind of just plug me in with different people. And I'm like, oh man, I need this here. Because I just haven't, either I missed the boat, haven't made the right connections. You know, obviously I made one today. Um, but I didn't have the, the same mindset of people to kind of bounce these ideas. But not just bounce them, but actually see them creating and producing and putting things forward. You know, like this Cliff Notes Project Studio, this is sort of something that was in my brain since 2010, 2012. My goal was to say, hey, listen, you have these artists that want to become this, you know, the, the greatest artists, but they, they started scaling back as far as like helping these artists like mature, doing interviews. So my goal was, let's say you're an artist, I come here, we do this interview. After this interview, I have the content, I say, hey, you can go use the content, chop it up as you as you may. And you're like, okay. People try for that. For me, I'm like, again, thank you. I showed you the back. Yeah. Again, for me, return on investment, I do um, you step in, in front of my step and repeat. I get my content, here you go, thank you. And again, as another thank you, I provide uh, a quick photo shoot, again, to bolster what you're doing if you're if you rap sing or whatever i bring you in the booth again this is supposed to be kind of like a mecca but i always wanted it to be somewhat exclusive because you know when a place is new place is hot then the world wants in do you know what you know what they call that so uh, first of all are you monetizing that not right now all right so my wife is upstairs saying what the hell are you doing down here boy <laughs> no she ain't saying that so so <laughs> so what you're doing right now you're you're providing um HBC, which is high value content. Okay. Now people will pay you for high value content because basically what you're doing is over delivering. You're over delivering right now. So if you continue to over deliver, whatever the price point is, if you provide high value content, they will pay for that because they're over delivering. Now if someone else was giving the same product you're giving, but they're just giving the product, right? They're gonna find more value in what you're doing. So someone's gonna pay for that over the next person because you're providing that high value content. You just need to monetize your thing. You're providing all these extras, mm -hmm. so it's a no brainer. Right, right. Like for instance, I got a I got an ebook that's dropping. I have a. Uh, that, that well, I got about? a book that's dropping. Let's talk about now, that. Now it's gonna come in an ebook form. Okay. A physical form. Okay. In an audio book form. Okay. I'm selling the ebook for more than the physical book. So the ebook's gonna be forty seven dollars. Explain. Now the reason why I'm selling the ebook for forty-seven dollars is because I'm HVC. Okay. High value content. Now number one, if I didn't give you extras, right. which I am, but if I didn't give you extras, you would still pay the forty-seven mm -hmm. because people—that's a comfortable number. People right. are gonna pay forty-seven dollars for an ebook. Right, right, right. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I've done it. Like uh, one of the coaches that I have that that taught me a lot of stuff about launching ebooks. He made five hundred thousand on a forty-seven dollar ebook. My goodness. In eight months. Now, what I'm saying is, he, he did it with HBC. Okay. So, uh, I'll give you an example. So, the ebook is $47. Now, I'm going to give you when my ebook is available, which it will be available about a week, or it's probably out by the time the podcast is out. Okay. But you get uh, an Instagram mini course, just like an a accelerated course. A couple of things you need to do every single day to gain some momentum. Okay. You're going to get uh, a million in mindset, seven day, seven day accountability challenge. Right, those are these are two courses, videos. I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you a blank check so you can, so you can uh, write down whatever your, mind, whatever your goal is, a million, billion, whatever it is. You can get these three digital assets along with the book. So to you, that's already worth forty-seven dollars. I'm giving you two mini courses, yeah, easily. and a blank check, yeah, and a book, forty-seven. Gotcha. Right. So to you, it's like, yeah, it's a no-brainer. I'm gonna right, pay forty-seven right. dollars for that. All right. Now, how you able to maximize when you have a, a product? You put it in a funnel. So my book is gonna be launched in a funnel. So you come in on the front end, $47. I give you the HBC, the high value contents, and no brain, I'm gonna pay $47. I'm getting all this extra, right, off the ebook. Once you once you put that in the cart, it's gonna ask you, it's gonna say, hey, now we have a physical book version available, $37. Brendan will sign it, and he will personally address it to you. So hey, Cliff, boom, 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 is the book. I'll put you know some spicy in there for you. Yeah. Would you like to buy that? It's $37. You got the option. Yeah. Whether you buy that or not, then it's another upsell mm -hmm. or bump. You want the audiobook. $20. You already told me yeah. that you like audiobook. Yeah. So at the minimum, you got you me might, for two out of three. You so might far, spend $67 yeah. off the rip. Yeah, I'm right? already in it. Boom. Yeah. 
So look, now we just raised the the, the unit per transaction on that on that on that um on this particular ebook so far, right? So now I'm gonna give you an OTO, which is a one-time offer, right? Now I might drop uh, a training that I did, okay, or uh, something else. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's 99. You might want to grab that. You might feel like that's valuable. Maybe it's a 30-minute training, 40-minute training. Mm -hmm. Um, so whether you get that or not, the final is the down sell. Hey, you can get this training. You didn't get it for 99. I'm gonna give it to you for 49. Now that might be a no-brainer to you. Right. Now you didn't spend what 67. Yep. You might want to grab the 49. Right. Right. So now right. you're over 100. Easy. Right. And then on the thank you, on the thank you page, I'm a, another video. Then I'm gonna give you into my other product for one dollar for seven days. Wow. And you're probably gonna jump into that. Yeah. You're like, well, I'm not gonna try. Why not? It's a dollar. Yeah, for a dollar. So now I just upsold you. After the seven days, what happens? After seven days, you stay in, you, you, then, then it keeps it just going keeps for eighty nine dollars. Because uh, that product, because that product that's, is that's that product is a um um is a accountability product. Okay. Our product designs for you to maximize. Your I day. like that. You might stay in that. It's an eighty nine dollar subscription. Okay. You know? I like that. So you just went through the whole funnel. One, one product, on the low, you're gonna spend 47. On the high, you might spend two to 300. Right. And then you may jump into the other product, which is a continuity, which is basically subscription-based. Yeah, because right. you got you got them in the system and you got like, in the look system. at all of this. Yep. I like that. And, and now you, I have your data, so then I can, hey, I get this other product that's coming out three months from now. And you just made it really palatable for a lot of people, including myself, which I knew a little bit of that, but you really made it seem like, okay, you know what? People are gonna do it. They're all gonna, gonna do it because, because you're gonna give them more value. Yeah, you know. So there's a OG. I call him OG. His name is Alex Media. He uh, manages um, Andrew Schultz, who's a comedian. He's out in New York. Uh, did a consultation with him. Um, he saw this. He was like, "Bro, turn it on. Like, turn on your studio. Like, let's get going. Like, here's your price point." He's charging t um, 200 out there, and I was like, "I don't know if I'm gonna get that out here, bro." He's like, "You're bugging." And I was, he was like, "You just make it. You gotta create." The market for it. Yeah, it's true. My problem is is self doubt, which I love the affirmation, which, I, like, and I'm not saying it for the for, for the video here. Like, let me let me look into the camera real quick. Yeah, this sounds all cool. It's me saying, hey, listen, you know, he's saying some great things. I'm gonna buy into it. I'm actually gonna buy into this simply because I've heard a decent portion of this before, but the people that I've heard it before, I didn't really know. And I'm like, all right, keep pitching what it is that you pitch. As I said in the beginning of the podcast, we just met, but because of the person that we know together, which is back which to is day, the power, which is a power relationship. Yeah, yeah, and that's just a check mark for me. That's forget the blue mark that people want to get on Instagram and all these other social platforms. Like Dave is the blue mark for me. You know what I'm saying? So tomorrow when I go to work um, for whatever amount of hours I go in there, because I'm contracted with them. Um, I'm gonna talk to him about all this, but I'm pretty sure you, you said you're gonna be making up with yeah, him. Yeah, I'm gonna see him later. You know? see him later. Um, but it's gonna be an interesting conversation, and I know I told you so it's gonna come out, but as he says that, I'm gonna have a little mirror. I'm gonna have the mirror right there, and I'll yeah, be like, should, oh yeah, what about you, that. player? You should hit him with that. I am definitely yeah. gonna hit him with that, because, you know, to, to go back, he's gotta do the same. So, be, be, let's talk about you, though. All I right. wanna I wanna talk about the merch that you got right there. Oh. You know? Yeah. I wanna talk about how you got to that point. I didn't know about the real estate. That's dope because I used to flip cribs and yeah. uh, I'm, a, I'm, six retire I'm retiring from real estate. I had to leave that alone. Anxiety and a lot of people still owe me money out there, and I lost a lot of money. Yeah. Um, but that's you can't do what I used to do back then. Um, but that's again, that's another story off camera, definitely. So, so before we get into me, I just wanna I wanna gift you something because you said that you were you, know, you have the self doubt or, mm -hmm. or the fear. So the, so the one thing I want to share with you or press upon you or gift you is the, is the, the um, a mindset of where you are right now is your bottom. So if this so if this is your bottom, this is the worst it's going to get. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't do anything, this is the end. This is it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you don't have no reason to not be trying to lie. But, yeah. Unless, unless what happens is some people end up being afraid of success. Mm. Or afraid of things changing. How do I? How, how does one identify having fear of success? That's that's like it's, it, it, unless it, it's in your book, you don't want to give the keys out. Nah, that's okay. It ends up being part of like procrastination. And the book is about uh, my business system. So you know, okay, I'll talk about whatever. It doesn't matter. 
I give whatever for free. Because a lot of the times, you need to give to get. Mm. And people don't, like my whole, I don't have my books in the car. But there's so much value in the book. And even in my free training that's available right now for free. People are not going to do the things. You can give them a whole roadmap. You can tell them exactly what to do. They're not going to do it. Yeah. So you can keep giving them the stuff. It doesn't matter. I can give you everything. I Like, I would be a millionaire soon. I can give you exactly my steps. Not everyone's going to do that. Yeah. It's just not. I think so just, it, you should give your stuff away. A lot of people don't give stuff away because they're afraid, like, I should be charging for this. It doesn't matter. If you're, if you're afraid to give things away, it's because you're not improving. Because you should be constantly improving. You should constantly be getting new information. You should constantly be getting better. I'm not afraid to give away stuff because I'm going to learn new stuff today. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As long as you're ahead of someone or ahead of your class or whatever, which you could be doing in real time, yeah. you're going to be fine. Give it away. I think that's pretty dope, man. I think, one, that's the, that just shows the confidence that you have in yourself in, in your belief system and what you've created. I think it's fire. I also think, too, it's just being comfortable and paying it forward. Um, I think for me, my fear has always been, I, I felt like I've always tried to pay forward, but it's never been reciprocated. Or maybe what I'm assuming to be reciprocated is not what is reality. Possibly. That yeah, that's possible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might just have to attribute, attribute it to different things. Like, like uh, move to Target. You know what I'm saying? I think you got a great situation. Dad, you, you still got your dad with the nice setup. You got a wife. You got kids too. Yes, sir. Two. Yeah. So you and, and you have this ability to have this studio and fly. Yeah. So it's like you need to. To me, I feel like you need to make things happen. It's kind of like kids that have both parents and live in a great neighborhood. Yeah. Like there's no way. There's no reason for them not to be. Do you successful. think? Do you think? I, do you think? Do you think it's more like? A, I'm getting comfortable and it says safety net then I'm just like eh, I'm making all these yeah, excuses you know be, what I'm saying it might be because you're comfortable for sure that's why I was asking what do you do with the first when you first, first your eyes? Want, yeah I like that man. like, like I, if you I take like, if you take you can accomplish more in a day than a lot of people accomplish in a week or a month if you just if you just spend an hour in investing in yourself every day if you do those things I share with you you're gonna get you'll get better in seven days you'll be better yeah. like for real you'll just be better you know, no, I, I could be a I better see dad, it. better husband. You'd be a better podcaster, better creative, better human being. You'd be more centered, probably less stress, less anxiety. Bro, more, more, I, I, more palatable I think, to create. I think you're 100 percent correct, man. Too. Um, it's almost like if you plug in, if you plug in the light right there into the wall, mm-hmm. it's gonna come on. It's like that. It's like that simple. To look at it. Like you just do the things. Are you gonna be doing this more often? What we just did, but more on. Uh, like let's say, you know, city to city type of thing, you know, like a, lot, tour? like a tour type of thing. Um, possibly are like, I want to continue to teach and share things. Okay. As I'm as I'm growing, like right now, my whole thing is, I'm launching this book. I know the book's at least gonna do fifty thousand minimum. So I want people to tell their story. So I want to show them that they can do it too. I want to motivate them. Like a lot of reasons why I haven't wrote a book before is because. I didn't know how to write the book, or I was, you know, I had anxiety. Can we talk about that a little like, bit? How'd you get there? How did to write you write the book? Yeah, because that I have all these ideas and things I want to well, say. Well, first of all, it, it kind of depends on how you want to talk about it. Writing a book's kind of easy right now. Twenty twenty one writing a book's easy. Talk about it's it. It's super then. easy. Like right first here. First of all, if you want to get money from a book, mm-hmm. you don't need to write the book. I can. You can get a thousand dollars real quick. A thousand thirty four dollars to be specific in seven to fourteen days without even writing the book. Again, if and then possible. that's going to that's going to prove to you mm-hmm. that there's people that want it, which is going to trigger you to actually write it. Really? You know what I'm saying? And you and, and most people write the book and put it on the shelf and it don't sell. And then you know what I'm saying? And that's you're talking about you're not talking about the physical like a physical book. You're talking I'm talking about, like about a, not even having a book. Having the idea is enough. If you make a book cover, I can help you make a thousand dollars on the on the book. That's that's wow. You can go talking. back and write the book later. We talking about and that's free later. information. Yeah, like I'm not gonna charge you for that. Like it's not you specifically. I understand. Anyway, what you're like it's free. Like I'll I'll give you I'll give you the play real quick. Whatever you want to write a book on, and everyone and everyone, everyone literally has something that they can write about. Mm-hmm. You got expertise. You're a genius at something. You got a story. Mm-hmm. You got family. You got friends. You got some type of experiences. You might just do poetry. You got something to share. 
What you want to do is make a book cover. If you can make a book cover, you can make at least a thousand. Make a book cover. If you're not a designer, go to Canva. If you can't do Canva, go to Fiverr, mm -hmm. five2arts.com. Mm -hmm. Get a book cover. Then you want to go to Gumroad, open up an account. Mm -hmm. They're not going to charge you for the account. They're going to charge you per transaction. Okay. They're not going to charge you to have an account. Uh, create that account. Upload your book cover to uh, to products. Mm -hmm. Now, what I like to do, you can you can do this or not do this. You don't have to do it. Make two copies of your book cover. So you have one copy of just a book cover and okay. another copy that's gonna have the available win date. Okay. Right? You're gonna title the you're gonna title your account in Fiverr or the product, you know, my cooking classics pre-sale. Yeah. Pre-sale. Right? In the description, you're gonna have available, pre-sale available on this date in the future. Your description of your book underneath that available on this date in the future. So now so far you got you got four touch points of people you're telling this pre -sale. You got whatever content you're gonna do mm -hmm. to promote your book, story, post, whatever. That's the first time they hear about the pre-sale. When they click the link, they're gonna see his pre-sale. Okay. When they get the description, they're gonna see the two pre-sales. That's four times, right? And then, when you're in our product page at the bottom, there's a content section. You're gonna upload your cover again with that available win date on that secondary cover. Because mm -hmm. when they make that purchase, mm -hmm. They're gonna get that email with that cover in there. It's gonna remind them that it's a There's okay. Okay. Wow. Right. Forty-seven dollar ebook. Yep. You need twenty-two sales. Thousand thirty-four dollars. <laughs> everyone has over two thousand contacts in their phone right now. Yeah. Yeah. And all you gotta do is, your family and friends are gonna support you just because you have something. You might get four or five sales quick, same right. day, maybe in a couple of days. Then at that point, you need to get eighteen more. You go on Instagram all day anyway. That's make it happen. That's a thousand dollars. Now, if you got a thousand thirty-four dollars, now you're motivated to write the book. You don't even gotta write it. Yeah. You can voice. You you, you can you can uh, voice transcribe it in your phone. You can go to otter.io. Same thing. Just voice the whole thing out. They'll transcribe it. Send it to Fiverr, five two rscom Get get a editor. Mm -hmm. They'll turn it into an ebook. You want graphics in there? Get get a designer. Get a designer. Yep. You got the money. I just gave you a yeah. thousand. You can you can afford it now. So there's no excuses. No excuses. It's funny because I've always I um, people come to me for like logos. I do. I used to do that. I'm like, nah, just go to Fiverr. You don't need me. And they're like, oh, you don't want to do it. I'm like, nah, you go to go to Fiverr. It's, it's, and I love that you it's, said that it's too. It's cheaper too. Like, yeah. You can get some of stuff done. Like my podcast, all I do is shoot it. I send it there for the editing. Yeah. They give me four pieces of content. I get long form video, long form audio, two clips. Four they do shorts. editing as well. I didn't, even, I didn't even look for that. Anything you want. Anything you want. That. That's one of my things. I, I shoot, I'm like, oh, now I got it. Uh, like, to, uh, like, like last night. I would dump all your content that's sitting on your hard drive, give them examples of what you want, send it to Fiverr, they have it all chopped up in probably like a week, bro. Yeah? Yeah. How do you, um, do you, do you we transfer or do you send them a drive? I do Google Drive, so I do yeah. everything Google Drive. So yeah. Like, Great. Wow, my goodness. That's a thousand bucks. You thousand do have a millionaire mindset, brother. Yo, tell and me. And I see you actually making it. <laughs> That's easy. Now, once you have that, you write the book. Mm -hmm. If you want to now do like a little sell 50,000 or something, yeah. Then you're gonna need the marketing aspect, right, right, which is right. totally different. Mm -hmm. But that's a quick jump start. How you can get a quick thousand or two thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? I got a friend right now who uh, he was in the, he was in the streets, rapper, ended up getting locked up, came out, uh, got into the union, you know, bought a house, started a business. I'm like, yo, write a book about it. You're gonna have all the homies in the streets that's gonna buy. That's a story book. for real, for real. Yeah. yeah, that's just one of his books. Yeah, yeah. He's like, bro, I need some cash. I'm like, bro, I right, just make a book cover. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> I'm, gonna help, I'm gonna help you write a book. You book need it. a stack maker cover. Just make a just make a cover. That's a bar. Quick. Now you have, now you gotta write it. Right. You need to give people people what yeah. they want. Yeah. yeah. You can't scam people. Yeah, I'm not telling you to scam people. <laughs> I'm telling you to just make a cover. Yep. Be authentic. Yep. You want to deliver a product. Yeah, the you have something to write about. Yeah. The length don't even matter. It can be 20 pages. It yeah. don't gotta be. It don't have to be 100 pages. Yeah. It should be an ebook. How long's your book? This this specific book is I think 20 28 29 pages. How, how long did it take you to create? I wrote it in two days. Yeah. I really wrote it in a day, but uh, I had a break, so I finished up the next day. 
Now, do you, your process, do you have someone like review it, someone outside? You know how when you get cologne and you spray it, and on the third spray, it just starts smelling the same, so you need that coffee ground yeah, to like yeah, reset yeah. your nose. So did you have like someone that was like a coffee ground to, to reset your brain in the writing, say, nah, you need to do this, this, and that? Or Yeah, so what I, what I did was, I was in workflow state, so I, it kind of came naturally. Okay. And then I got a homie that's a copywriter, I'm talking about supporting our friends. Yeah. So I just paid him his rate nice. to do it. And then I had another friend, um, she helped me format. Okay. She actually reread it too. Okay. Oh, cool. I didn't actually do it. So I had two people do it. Okay. Um, and I was able to get it done. Um, but yeah. See, and that's a beautiful thing. Can you just repeat what you just said? What, support your friends? No, no. One, you said something about rate. You said pay their rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I pay, pay their rate. I pay their rate. Why? Why? No, it, it, and this is totally off topic, but something I want to talk. I just want to throw. Do you think? It's a minority thing that we do that. Like, we're like, yeah. hey, I can't get a hookup. I think so. Why? Because, I mean, uh, people of color, mm -hmm. persons of color, um, we've been brainwashed a lot over the years. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I think, it, I think it's because of that, social conditions, how we view ourselves. And like, we're very powerful people. You know, like, people, they're scared of us. That's why they target us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, you look how you look. Features are strong, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You you have bass in the way that you that you way that you mm -hmm. even if you got a lighter voice, you still got a still uh, got Yeah, bass yeah, you come off certain way. Yeah. Com to them. Compressed in the non melanated voice. One hundred percent. Right? And then, you know, like the energy that you just put out, you know what I'm saying? Like our movements, our mannerisms, our like we like the way that we uh describe and and, and, and talk about things, like we're different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they try to dim our light make us feel like we're not special when right. they know we're special which is why they fuck with why they fuck yeah <laughs> why they try so they the take problem is, advantage <laughs> we view ourselves as not special and we end up viewing ourselves as threats so they've been able to brainwash us to look like you're a threat to me you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. because how i viewing you which is really how they view us but they were able to manipulate us to now threaten each other, each other. be yeah. fearful of, of each other and then because we're dealing with that we ain't paying attention to credit, taxes, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. like high to play value, their, to play their self, game. Like self the other esteem, game. Yeah. self confidence. We ain't like that's the minimum. We ain't paying attention to that because we're worried about, yo, what you looking at, fam? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're still stuck in that. You're like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we're still like you said, we're still that, stuck that, in that. I think that's a, a, a such a great point. And that's again, that's why I, I like, asked. Like when I hear like when Pops don't pass away, bro, he's twenty one. He got killed by other other kids. Yeah. It's that ego, man. It's the e I call I call it the evil e. I call it the evil e. It's the ego, man. I always tell people before we talk, like check your ego. I don't really take myself like too serious or nothing like that. Um, but at the end of the day, I think if we all checked our ego, we do what we gotta do. We're gonna continue to succeed. Like I see yourself doing, like I'm doing. Look at that a little affirmation right there for you. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm not saying it just for the podcast. I, I I think I tend to fall back. I might be one of those people that needs like a not a hug but like hey that's what's up type of thing i do. hear it from my wife yeah, we all but sometimes do, i feel like i need to hear it from the outside we all looking do in. your coach and the coach unless you have a coach we all do i do yeah. i'm not better or special than no one yeah, no one is like we all need somebody yeah no nah, that's on whatever fact. level you want you got a wife bro you're already better than a lot of people you're in a way privileged position obviously obviously depending on your relationship how that is but like you just keep watering your grass bro she want to see you succeed. She gives you the ability to to fly, create, yeah. you know what I'm saying, creatively. You know, I'm going to show her this later tonight. We'll probably watch this together before I chop it up and send off, send it to Fiverr, chop it up. Yeah. And then, and then Fiverr, I need a watching. long form audio, long form video. I need some uh, clips for TikTok, YouTube shorts, and uh, Instagram reels. Well, I'm, gonna, I, I'm signing up for, for, for what you're talking about. And again, this is not for the podcast. I really need someone that's in this that is going to say you need yeah 100%. i need a i need a you need person and i so i can go back and say how and they can say you're going to need to do this 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 and what then if, i can follow up i think the easiest thing like for people that just want to be better i think they should jump into my winner circle winner circle is 89 dollars a month it's seven it's uh it's a dollar for seven days that's going to give you like we talked about the morning routine yes sir that's going to give you the things that we talked about but it's going to give you a tracker you can do it in real time. It's gonna hold you accountable. 
then there's a community that we're gonna all interact with, and I'm, you know, I'm gonna post my my day in there, mm -hmm. which is gonna encourage you to post your day, and then and then twice a month we'll have a conversation. Okay, what are people doing? Okay. And for, for, for the people to know, or like myself, when you say uh, a community, is there a specific platform? Yeah, so that we you're use using? we use Discord. Okay, yeah, yeah. really. So it'll be a Discord. It'll okay. be a Discord community. Um, you know, and then like things like this. Like if I'm in the city, mm -hmm. just pull up a link. Okay. Yeah, we all need that. Yeah. Now, if you get a if you get a uh, alert every morning, and it's like, yo, did you do this, 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 and this? You're like, oh, I need to do it. Yeah. That's and a you, fact, and yeah. you just go to the thing and like, okay, yeah, I knocked mine out for the day. That's like if you just want to be accountable. Now, if you want a a, a business system, then it would jump. Then then it's like the Daily Beast, which okay. is a ninety day program. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's to help you with your product and your service to scale it. Okay, you'll get funnels in that. You'll get support in that. Um, What's the price point on that? The price point on that it varies because uh, really based on uh, like there's an interview process okay um, it's not expensive but it's not cheap yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay mm -hmm. that makes sense well it, the, the the price point won't matter if your product is as good as you're saying yeah that it is. you're gonna get a lot of value like me I paid so far over 50 50 stacks on coaching okay and I want to spend a million dollars on my personal development yeah because I like LeBron it's an investment spent, LeBron spent 2 million on his body you spend 10 million dollars on your mind bro yeah you know what I'm like where would you be at? And I interviewed this dude named Mark Smith out of Toronto. He lives in Vancouver now, I believe. But he told me that I'm like, bro, I'm definitely doing that. I'm still that. Yeah. Because that's what he would, that's that's what he wants to do. Okay. So spending 5k, 10k, 15, 20, 155 thousand dollars on on coaching or a program, but if the return is right. double, triple, the return investment, that, then, then you, you're winning. It don't yeah. matter. I agree. I spend one fifty if it's gonna bring you back eight hundred thousand. That's a no brainer. One thousand percent. I think people get shot, scared away, and I'll be one of those people when you hear that initial number, like I gotta spend what? Like, bro, I'm just trying to make ends meet. Never mind trying to to pay into you know some other things like that. Like, and, and I had to, and my wife and I had to evaluate our lives, and I think COVID actually was um, some sort of a blessing. To, you know, again, respectfully, I say that because it's affected a lot of people in my world and others, right? But I think. Like Comcast, that's a scratch outside of internet. I don't yeah. need all of that. Like I was like, why are we watching so much TV? We're not doing nothing. That. So we that's shutting down. November six is when we're shutting it down. And all the little things we've identified. But bro, this was a really, really, really good conversation. Um, again, I want to end it with just again saying our friend's name, David Hill. He gave me a, a tag. What up, David? Because he was like, yo, what's up with this Cliff Nose project? I was like, I need this. <laughs> He's like, what's your tagline? I was like, I don't know, I don't know. He was like, I got one for you. Great people, great stories, the Cliff Notes Project. And he was right. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate you, appreciate bro. You, bro. Thank you for coming through. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Clifford Bonet, as always. Shout out to Sharice. Sharice in the building. In the building. We're going to have to talk about Sharice when we get out there. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Clifford Bonet. This is the Cliff Notes Project. Again, David Hill. Great people, great stories, Cliff Notes Project. And we're out of here.